Rachel Notley's NDP unwittingly sabotaged this year's Alberta fire season on their way out the door. Today I'll show you all the details how CBC also tried to sneak in a little bit of fake news into what was a pretty good investigation and why this is just part of a larger pattern of the NDP screwing up things in agriculture and forestry. The Chequeg Creek wildfire has been blazing in northwestern Alberta for about a month now. In fact, just yesterday, another small town, La Crete, fell under evacuation notice. High Level is also under evacuation notice again. And the Métis settlement of Paddle Prairie saw the same fire roar into their town, claiming several houses just a few weeks ago. Fire season, though, it comes annually here. Fires are nothing new. But the NDP's mishandling of fire season, well, that was a pretty recent development. Look at this from a CBC investigation into why the Chuckhead Creek wildfire got so out of control so fast. There are 127 lookout towers across the province, each covering an area of about 5,000 square kilometers. Only one observer staffs each tower during the fire season. Their primary job is to detect and call in smoke and fires in their area. Because of the isolated and critical nature of their work, lookout observers were exempt from the old employment standards code. They worked seven days a week, sometimes up to 16 hours a day. They received an extra day's pay every week in lieu of overtime. But their exemption expired in November 2018 after the NDP government legislated changes to the code. The union said that without consulting them beforehand or attempting to negotiate. The government's wildfire management branch issued interim rules for observers at the beginning of this fire season, compliant with the new employment code. Under the interim rules, observers had to take a day off each week, leaving their lookouts unstaffed. The ministry also was required to pay overtime to the observers. To offset the potential overtime costs, the ministry then prorated the observers' pay based on the severity of the wildfire threat, and they also were not allowed to work more than 12 hours a day. The union said many staff were blindsided by the changes, which it estimated cut observers' pay between 30 and 60 percent. More than 60 grievances were filed and several seasoned observers quit. Now this is from an earlier June 6th CBC story on the changes in regulations after the union repping the firewatch workers raised the alarm bells. Dreeshin, that's Devin Dreeshin, the rosy-cheeked new conservative agriculture minister who's actually a farmer, said the government will work with the union to resolve the issue. His statement didn't address why his ministry didn't act before the fire season. Well, that's a neat little way of CBC trying to split the blame of the catastrophic NDP-created disaster in agriculture and forestry with the new UCP government, but it's completely unwarranted and also completely dishonest. The new UCP government was officially sworn in on May 21st. The Chuckhead Creek fire was already well out of control for the better part of a week by then and forcing mass evacuations on May 21st, the day of the swearing in. How could the UCP make changes to regulations before they were really even government to prevent a fire that had already started and then already gotten out of control before they were even sworn in. Honestly, CBC, if you're watching, you were doing such good work until you sabotaged your own story with fakery and Jason Kenney derangement syndrome. But this all reminds me of two other major instances of the NDP tinkering with things in agriculture and forestry when they didn't really need to that eventually ended in disaster. Who could forget Bill 6, a bunch of anti-rural office do-gooders in cubicles in Edmonton tried to fix farming, something rural Albertans have done successfully for, you know, a century and a bit now, by imposing union-style work regulations and child labor laws on tens of thousands of Alberta farms and ranches. Rural Alberta revolted, and the NDP had to water down their union-drafted law in the end. But this recent 
tinkering with the firefighting budgets reminds me of how the NDP screwed up all the water bomber contracts because while the NDP were spending money like drunken sailors at port in all other ministries, the one place they decided to get a little fiscal conservative was in agriculture and forestry. Because of NDP budget cuts, bureaucrats had to rewrite water tanker contracts just as the Fort McMurray wildfire was about to start. By the time the contracts were rewritten properly, some water tanker companies had already sought employment contracts elsewhere. And by the time the Fort McMurray fire was out of control, the Martin Mars bomber, the world's largest, based just a short flight away in British Columbia, owned by Coulson Flying Tankers, had decided to go to an air show to pay their bills. That story was one of the biggest of the year here at The Rebel in 2016, exclusive only to us and covered nowhere else, not even the CBC. I guess because CBC couldn't find a way to blame conservatives for it this time around. Anyway, now the UCP have cleaned up the mess and reversed the changes the NDP made. But just like with the water tanker companies, a lot of the experienced fire watch professionals have gone somewhere else for work. We've lost their expertise. And I guess even the NDP don't believe their own fear-mongering rhetoric that deadly climate change is going to increase the frequency of forest fires. If they did believe that, they wouldn't be creating regulations that leave fire watch towers completely unmanned during fire season. For the Rebel.media, I'm Sheila Gunn-Reed. Speaking of complete and total hypocrites not practicing what they preach, have you seen my video where I detail how Justin Trudeau is a fake feminist and where I lay out my plan to tell the world that he's not. You can see that video today at fakefeminist.com. And while you're there, if you're so inclined, please do donate to my billboard truck that I want to drive around Ottawa. That's at fakefeminist.com.